Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming up this week, we're going to tell you what's new in Disneyland, including the changes that Disney announced that will be coming to the parks on May 1st. I'm also going to share my thoughts on the future of the Paradise Pier Hotel. All that coming up next from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, and points around Southern California. This is the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged. This is the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged, episode 763, for the week of April 3rd, 2019. Our show is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. And by disboards.com. Join the more than 1.5 million Disney fans who plan every aspect of their Disneyland vacation on our forums. You'll find advice for everything from theme parks, resorts, restaurants, and so much more. Head over to the Disneyland forums on disboards.com and join in the conversation. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the show coming to you from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by Corey Fiasconaro. Hey there. Ryan Clavin. Hello. Back in the oh, production. I'm gone. Yep. Back in the production, look, our producer, Mr. Craig Williams. Hey. And out in California, the lovely Mr. Tom Bell. Hello, everyone. And the lovely Ms. Mary Jo Mulatto Willie. Hi, everybody. It was so great. You know, it was so funny. I was just like seeing you like yesterday. And I know, right? Um, so we all just got back from uh, California late, late last night. Mm. And uh, we're here early, early this morning. Well, early for us, it's 11 a.m. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, but it, we had an incredible week, an incredible week. But we're going to get to that <clears throat> in just a moment. Uh, first, some things in housekeeping want to announce our candle our, our magic candle of the month for the month of April is one of my other all-time favorites because that's what I'm going to to pick our candle of the month it is the contemporary candle um, absolutely fantastic candle burning it in the studio right now um, I didn't think I was gonna like this one because it's such a light scent but it is incredible and uh, <clears throat> sorry hold on <clears throat> I don't know why I'm all verklempt. Um, and we're doing something a little different this month. Uh, we've been giving away some some gift cards. Thought we'd give away something a little more fun uh, this week or this month. So uh, Magic Candle Company does a subscription box. So every month they'll send you a subscription of uh, you know their whatever candle they've chosen for the month. You'll get an eight ounce candle, a room spray. Uh, a car freshener and wax melts in whatever their fragrance of the month is. Uh, we are giving away a three month subscription. It's a value of uh, $59.99. And uh, all you have to do is sign up for a couple things. First, you got to follow us on Twitter, but you've got to go through the link we're going to provide in the show notes. You're going to see it on Facebook. You're going to see it everywhere uh, on the site. Um, you, you follow us uh, on Twitter. If you're already following us, you can select that in the little box where it's asking you this stuff. Say that you're already following on Twitter and it'll ask you for your, your username and then verify that you're following us. You get one entry <clears throat> in our sweepstakes uh, for doing that. But if you want to get five more entries, you sign up for the Diz mailing list. So you can potentially have six entries, six chances to win this subscription box. So like I said, head out to DizUnplugged.com, check out the show notes. You'll find a link to sign up in there. Uh, the Diz Unplugged and Diz Facebook pages. Um, it's going to be on the Diz itself. It's going to be everywhere. So um, that's how we're going to do it this this uh, this month. thought that would be something a little different. I don't know why I'm <clears throat> having such a problem this morning. Forgive me. But uh, uh, you could also just head out to magiccandlecompany.com and uh, code Disney info saves you 15% on your order. And uh, I'm going to, I think I'm just going to make that my name. I'm going to change my name to 
code DisneyInfo.com <laughs> saves you 15% on your order because I'm saying it so much. Um, Just wear a t-shirt around with it on it. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> have, have candle t-shirts made yeah. up with my coat on the back Your license plate <laughs> scratch my back and you'll smell with candle of the month <laughs> scratch and sniff, <laughs> scratch and sniff no, shirt no scratch and sniff, sniff that, t-shirts bad idea that'll be fun in 100% humidity I in the summertime gonna, <laughs> I was gonna say but uh, this was called swamp <laughs> 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 so um, alright that's that's basically what I have for housekeeping um, we have anything else anything California people uh, can I just say a quick thank you? I'm sure they're listening to the Lost and Found team at the Disneyland Resort who came up with my reading glasses nice. so I can see you today. Oh, that's a bold claim that you think they're listening. You never know. I, I don't know. <laughs> we were going to different attractions, and I heard a lot of cast members acknowledging that the Diz was, was in town. So that yeah, was no, we cool. did. We did. That was very cool. Oh no! Yeah. So did uh, so did <clears throat> Rhino and I. It, the most uh, awkward moment when we were going into Haunted Mansion, and he's like, "Oh, the Diz. I love the Diz Daily Fix. Where has that been?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh, uh. <laughs> and then I had to be like, "Our friend doesn't have a fast pass. <laughs> I gypped you on a show, and I'm causing problems." <laughs> And I want something from you. Yeah. I'll take something away and ask you for something in return. Um, but I think first we have to talk about uh, the announcement that Disney made this week uh, regarding uh, a number of things, not the least of which um, strollers uh, are now going to be restricted to a certain a certain size. Mo- most strollers, they say, will fit into the size restriction. But some of the, you know, I think the obnoxious triple wides. Oh, my God. Um, Need to go yeah. along with the Keens wagons. Uh, if you're not familiar with these, they're basically your. It's like this big old wagon that people push around the parks. That I think they bring their 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 kitchen and their the, the and Disney said enough of that. And, and apparently, <clears throat> on their on the Instagram on the Keens wagon Instagram page, they took exception to this policy they weren't nasty per se but they made it very clear that they thought this was a mistake on disney's part um but uh the the one that really i think has most people talking is the fact that smoking is now being banned anywhere inside any of the disney uh theme parks uh in both uh, walt disney world and disneyland so uh and i know a lot of people have been reaching out to me because they know i'm a smoker and uh, asking me what my thoughts were. I think you're expecting a rant from me on this, and I am going to disappoint you. Um, <clears throat> uh, well, first of all, it was kind of serendipitous that about three weeks ago I began quitting <laughs> smoking. Um, I had no idea this was coming. It just felt like time. So maybe intuitively I'm in touch with Disney's whatever you're connected with <clears throat> i'm connected with their with their with, with their, their policies with their policies <laughs> um but um look i knew this was coming i didn't know when i didn't think it was going to happen now um but they've been moving in this direction now for a while mm. where you know they'll take a smoking area away and don't replace it so right now in disneyland park and california adventure you only have one smoking area in each one and then you can smoke in the Esplanade in between the in, in between the two, and it was obvious in Disneyland that they were going to go that direction. I didn't think they were going to do it out here, though. Yeah. I really didn't. Um, and but I want to, you know, I'll, I'm going to talk about the impact I think it's going to have on World and the Disney World show, which I will record later. But you'll will have seen yesterday. Um, where Disneyland is concerned, I do not think the impact is going to be the same as it is out here. Um, I used to say that if Disney ever banned smoking in the parks, that would be it for me. I'd never, never go back. I know I've said that multiple times. Um, and so when this policy was announced, 
that they were going to be banning uh, smoking in the parks. I, I I asked myself the question. So, yeah? You going to stop going? Right. No. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. And it, re- it just kind of reminded me of the realization I had years ago about ticket prices. I would rail about the ticket price increases and rail about the and then go and buy the tickets. And so I started saying, are you going to pay it? Shut up. Shut up. If you're going to pay it, stop complaining about it. Um, <clears throat> if I have to choose between Disney and smoking, I'm going to choose Disney. It's too much a part of my life. And it's a much more positive part of my life than smoking is. Um, do I have a right to smoke? Yes, I do. I do. It's legal. I have a right to smoke. But that's private property. And they get to say what goes on on their property. The same way I get to say what goes on on the property I own here at my house. So, <clears throat> is it inconvenient? Yes, it is. But... Honestly, I heard that too. I don't yeah, know. okay. I was, I was a monster out here somewhere. Um, <laughs> uh, but, you know, I... Well, here's here's how I, th- I was thinking about it. Um, you know, I, I have two things to say about it. But one was, so when they really eliminated it down to one smoking area... If you're on the opposite side of the park and you want to have a cigarette uh, or whatever, you have to go all the way to the other to that smoking section. So you do have to travel a ways to get to it. So you just have to think to yourself that they've relocated that smoking section to right here, right outside the gate. It's not like they're banishing you completely and entirely of getting off property to do it. They're just saying you have to do it outside of the gates. And I'm I'm assuming well, there's going to be a smoking area outside. Oh, there of the is. Gates, there's, right? There is already. There's multiple areas in the Esplanade where you can smoke. So, and that's what I'm assuming they're going to. I'm assuming they're yeah. keeping those. They yeah. keep it or just you know whatever. But um, the other thing in California, and this is why I thought it was going to happen in California, but not necessarily in world uh, with marijuana being legal. Recreational marijuana being legal. Um, there is never a time that I go to a smoking area in California and yeah. I don't smell it. Now, not supposed to. You're not supposed to do it. But doesn't stop them every single time. Now, that's something that, you know, that really bothers me. Um, mm-hmm. ba- based on my history as a recovering alcoholic and drug addict, um, marijuana was a big part of my life for a long time. I can handle being around alcohol with no problem. Marijuana is a different story. Um, so I that also gives me a perspective on non-smokers. Yeah. How they feel about cigarette smoke. Right. Um, so do I, like I said, you know, I, I am I happy that they're doing it? Not particularly. It's a kind of, a, especially out here, it's going to be a pain in the neck um, walking out to even vape, you know, because that's what I've started doing. Go ahead. Because in California, <clears throat> they have the bag check system set up completely different. So you can come in through downtown Disney or you can come in through one of the hotel ways and your bag's already checked and you can go between park and park without getting it checked again. World, not so much. So if you want to go outside and have a cigarette or vape or whatever, you're going to have to go. Well, no, no gonna, you don't have to. No, no, no. We're not going to have to go that. through security yeah. to do that. Oh, no. you're not? Okay. No, no, no. They'll have, they'll have, you know, and we'll talk about, the, I, I don't want to spend too much time talking about the world policy on this show, because mm-hmm. uh, we're going to talk about that on the Tuesday show. But, um, you know, I, I wonder though, is it going to be, and you know, it's not changing at the resorts. You still have the smoking areas at the resorts, uh, but those aren't plentiful either, to be honest. Um, you know, you're not they allowed. It. Go it's, ahead, it's eliminated in downtown Disney as well. So both the parks and downtown Disney, it's eliminated. So I think just in the Esplanade, they'll have. Well, I hadn't heard that about the downtown Disney piece. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the notice said downtown Disney as well, so that makes it a little little more inconvenient. But as long as they still have the, the like you said, the smoking areas in the Esplanade, that you should that sh- it should be okay. But it did surprise me that they they included downtown Disney. Yeah. So do you uh, think that they're going to have? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to I was going to say, do you think that they're going to also have a smoking section 
where the hotels enter downtown Disney so that people have two two choices because that's a lot if you're over at let's say Earl of Sandwich and you need you would like to have a smoke to walk all the way to the Esplanade. No, uh, so okay, I have an answer to this something. before we keep talking about it. It's it is actually not going to be allowed to smoke in the Esplanade either. It says right here, effective May first, twenty nineteen, theme parks, the Esplanade, and downtown Disney district will become smoke free. So, so you, where where so they you are going to have to? I that's mm, well, I don't know. It doesn't say that on here. It only says effective immediately. So I don't know. Um, <clears throat> and it does say effective in May first. It, effective May first. Yeah, and it does say smoking marijuana or other illegal substances is not permitted at any time. Um, the smoking of tobacco, e-cigarettes, or other products that produce a vapor or smoke is allowed only in designated outdoor smoking areas. Guests may not smoke in Disney Resort hotel rooms or on patios or balconies. And then it says in here, note, effective May 1st, 2019. It will say at the theme parks, Esplanade, and downtown Disney will be smoke-free. I thought they were still keeping like a designated area. So where are they – the yeah, park. well, that, that begs the question then where – at Disneyland, where do you go? I mean, are they literally yeah, sending you yeah. out through security? Because if they just have like a designated area, that will direct people at least where to go. But if they just say no areas at all, that's going to have be a problem. Well, what's going to happen is people are just, and this is going to be the problem in the world. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be the problem in the world. People are just going to find a dark corner somewhere. And what they're setting themselves up for is confrontation, repeated confrontations with guests, which is really not something they like. Um, it's it's one of those things where it, it's going to feel very jarring, I'm sure, right now. Um, you know, he- California obviously being a little bit more health conscious, I think, than than Florida and stuff, um, environmentally conscious. But it's it, it's like it, it, it in like five years, you're going to be like, remember when you used to smoke? It'll be like, remember when they used to sell bras on Main Street? Like they're not going to. It's going to be one of those things where once you've adjusted and it's become a thing. It, it won't be that big of a deal for you anymore. It'll, I mean, it'll still be probably a struggle for anybody that is a smoker because I know, you know, you have that, I've traveled with friends who are smokers and I try to understand, you know, that feeling of being like easier said than done being like, well, just don't smoke for, right. you know, yeah, 10 hours, it's, but if it's, it's in your blood. It's, well, you, know, it's, you have to, un- you have to understand that the withdrawal, uh, the process of, of, of withdrawing from nicotine is routinely, Compared to withdrawal from heroin, yeah, I, yeah, I know um, headaches that, and stuff, right? And it, well, I, it's 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 a, a um, it, it can be very. It, it, it's not easy. It's not easy. Let me just put it that way. Uh, which is why I'm choosing to do the transition to vape. Sh- should we start a Disney nicotine patch company yeah. right here <laughs> now? Have a little Mickey Mouse like, shape. Well, yeah, a little patches. castle that different. you slap on there whenever you need the fix. Um, different characters. Well, I'm stuff. very curious then, like, because my understanding was from the announcement that they were sending people to, uh, you know, outside the park, there'll be designated areas outside the park. I know that's going to be the case here in the world. I think I just assumed that was going to be the case in land, but now you're saying the Esplanade, downtown Disney. Um, I can pull up the Disney World one too to double check, but um, yeah, I I mean, I get it too. The the park is going to be uh, the capacity of that park is getting a lot more full, and I think it's kind of weird where they have the smoking area in Disneyland right now, which is in that um, Big Thunder area between Big Thunder and um, Fantasyland, especially given that's one of the entrances for Star Wars. So you're going to have a really crowded area, you know, and because it's only one smoking section of the park, everybody who smokes is in that section. So it becomes a lot more um, like dense in that smoke than it probably would be if there were several spots. But I so I, I thought that already. So the, the fact that they announced this, I was like, okay, well, somebody I, said something. I've been saying this a lot. I don't understand why they don't go and do what Tokyo Disneyland does. Tokyo Disneyland has smoking rooms. Really? In the hotels, in the parks. There are smoking rooms. So, and they're like back out of the way. Hmm. They're ridiculously well ventilated. You don't, you're passing by, you're in the park, you're passing. I had trouble finding them. I had to have cast members direct me to them because normally... You can kind of smell where the smoking area is. Not with these, you couldn't. And there were several of them located around the parks. Um, and they're well ventilated. Some of them had seating. Uh, you go in and you, uh, you know, and, and you smoke and you come out. And there's no, 
No other guests are going to be bothered by that. <clears throat> it really was an elegant, I thought an elegant solution. I was surprised mm-hmm. when it was at the hotel because we checked in to the hotel and I asked where the smoking area was and she said it was down the hall on your right. I went down the hall and to the right and there were a pair of doors leading outside. I'm like, okay, it must be. And I'm looking around for the, the smoker's pole or the ash, and there's nothing. Left. So I just like walked away and, you know, to a secluded area outside and had my cigarette and came back in. It wasn't until the next morning that I was walking that same way and I happened to glance over to my left and saw a smoking room. <laughs> and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And I go in and... <laughs> Now it's like it's like six thirty in the morning, all right, and uh, there are like two or three other people in there, and everybody has just woken up. One guy was still in his pajamas. I'm not kidding, um, and people have their phones out, and no one is looking at each other. No one is acknowledging each other, and there's this like weird, creepy Japanese music. <laughs> being piped in and i'm like this is some kind of film noir thing going on here right now alley gambling (laughs) um it was just no it was just like it was like the sadness room it was like (laughs) um but the, the whole concept of you know putting it in a room away from everything else it's not bothering anybody um and they were readily available wherever you were like even in disney sea which is a fairly large park there were multiple hmm. places to go and smoke. Um, and I thought that was a very elegant solution. So, um, but apparently this is the way of things. I'm very curious to know, like, do we have to go outside security to smoke? Dis- well, so it says um, for the Disney World one, to put that in perspective, it doesn't seem to be as clear cut. It says, it says Walt Disney World <coughs> theme parks, water parks, and ESPN wide world of sports complex will be smoke free. So, it doesn't specify like outside of the turnstiles because our security thing being different, but it sounds like on the Disneyland site that you are going to have to step out like wherever the security checkpoint is, kind of step out to have your cigarette and then come back in. But with the way security works now, you'd be smoking in the line of people that come in, you know, an area that was once I thought smoke free to begin with. So like, do you have to go all the way out to where the lift station is? Or I don't know. Maybe? <clears throat> I don't know. That's going to be very interesting. We have to find out. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. sure they took everything into consideration, and they'll probably, if it is outside security, I'm sure that they will have a a new checkpoint. Like if you are leaving just the for that reason, checkpoint. yeah. Like I, at least I would hope they would do that. I mean, that's that seems like it's the only fair thing to do. If they're asking you to leave, then they should allow you to get back in sooner. But uh, then, how do you know? who's taking advantage of that like if you know it could just be family start flooding so maybe they won't with that um it's it's very it's an it's an interesting call all around with it it is but. it is so i guess we will find out more about what's happening with that but let's talk about the uh, keens uh being banned Good i cannot wait for i this. hate <laughs> yeah i hate them and we don't have this problem out in walt disney world as much with the wagons you see it every once in a while uh and a lot of some of like the bigger fancier like put together strollers where it's themed to a specific thing but disneyland is you're constantly tripping over these things the, and the wagon ones yeah thing? yeah and i it's I don't understand why you would ever need to carry a wagon around all day. You're not you're not the first people coming out to settle the West. You, <laughs> you're just going to Disneyland for a day. But I, I don't know, unless you've got six people, six kids sleeping in there all the time. Yeah, I well, I, I, let me let me defer to a mother. Um, what what are the purpose? To, what are the purpose of these things? The things have changed when my kids were younger. <laughs> And they outgrew the strollers. We they were walking at three and four. We didn't have five, six year old. And I'm sorry. I mean, not against families that that um you know the kids get tired and it's a lot. But we tailored our days to when they were tired. We rested. We didn't tote them around in in these caravan type type wagons. And 
that's to me that's relatively recent we didn't used to have those and i guess somebody started and now people see that and they've got three i saw one that had four small children in it and or i saw one the yes the this weekend there were just a couple of kids in there and they were sprawled out in all this comfort and just being pushed by their parents and it's too much there are too many people at disneyland to accommodate that type of stroller that's for the parks and and wide white spaces not for not for disneyland yeah. even as a, even if i had small children right now i wouldn't use that that was i, I think it's I'm, uh, Sorry, I was going to say that was my parents' role with Walt Disney World and just um, any parks in general is they took us when we were toddlers and, you know, still being pushed around in small strollers. That was back in the 80s. So, you know, strollers were still very, very tiny back then. But then when we started coming on our family vacations every other year or so, the role was for them. They weren't bringing us until they knew we could walk all day. And, you know, take breaks if we had to. But that that was it. They would maybe carry us for a little while or walk. But strollers were not allowed. And I mean, that's as, as a local, I might approach things differently one day when I have kids. But, uh, you know, like in terms of one day, I would want to take kids to Disneyland. That's going to be my method. If if you can't walk all day, then it shouldn't be something like I shouldn't have to push you around all day. It's not. It's not something you. A trip to Disneyland isn't just a free handout. Well, no, I mean, I, I don't want to. I don't want anyone to think. So I, we do use a wagon in my family. Like, not. I don't remember being Ooh. in the wagon. Like, I had a wagon, but not in the parks. We don't bring it to the parks with us. But I understand the wagon. I come from a small town, you know. And when we do like the Fourth of July celebrations and stuff like that, we the kids go in the wagon, like because it's easier for me to pull them in a wagon, and I. I've seen how they interact and there'll be like three or four kids. I'm like, hop into the wet, you know, four is a lot to put in there, but it's sometimes because that's what you're used to. Like it, you don't think about it in a sense of being like my entire town. There's probably three of my entire town in the parks at any given time. I come from a town where it's 12,000 people is the capacity of the, you know, not capacity is the population of the town. So you know, you don't think about it, a crowd in that way. And I told my mom where I was like, oh, no, we don't do that at Disney. We don't do that. We never did it when I was a kid. We walked when I was a kid, too, because when I was three or four, that was the deal. We're going to go to Disney and when we're at Disney. And we, I remember being sat down. And we're going to walk. And when we're tired, we'll take a break. And when we're not, we'll keep walking. Well, I mean, I'm curious uh, to see how it all shakes out. Um, you know, we're going to find out a month from now Um what the uh, on the ground reaction is to these changes uh, when they when they happen, um, um, I think the ice one is weird though. We didn't really talk about that, but right. like the the I guess the loose ice I can see loose ice and dry ice. First of all, who's bringing in dry ice? Yeah, really. Second of all, uh, magicians <laughs> for the smoke effects. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the loose ice I guess I can see it as being like um, a hazard. You know, if you're well, no, I think what somebody explained to me was that uh, it's uh, they have to dig around through that ice to make sure mm. there's nothing else under it. I so because you can you can conceal things yeah. under ice. So I think that's. Probably yeah. part of the reason. They, I was told they have already started enforcing that in some places. So if you are headed to the parks, maybe think about getting those re um, the refreezable ice packs, and you can bring those. Yeah, and I I do see one part of it that people with uh, medical needs where they need to keep medicine cold that can be an impact. But uh, Disney also did say that of course you're always welcome to fill up on ice once you're in the park. So it might be a thing where if you only, if you don't feel comfortable with ice packs, keeping anything you have cold, like your medicine, uh, then, then fill up with ice up till you get to security, dump it out. And then as soon as you get in the parks, go fill right back up. Um, or if you're carrying something that's that, that important, that can't be off, uh, off chilled for that long, then, I, you know, that's, that's a whole other concern that right. I think you have to go directly to Disney saying, these are the issues we have. Can we make an exception? Well, there's, another your, oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> there's, there's another alternative. There's another alternative. You could freeze your water bottles. That's what, that's what we do when we go camping. Instead of taking ice, we freeze our water bottles and it keeps everything cold. And then as, as the day goes on, we, we could take them out, let the water melt and we have ice cold water during the day. I don't see why I think 
that would be a good, uh, yeah. good option. For there are people. plenty of options for the yeah. ice. There are plenty yeah. of options. And, and also, I, uh, I believe first, first Aid will store any medicines for you in their refrigerator. Right. There you go. Yeah. Right. So, all right, well, we, we will find out. We will find out. Um, now, a couple things that we – uh, that happened this week while we were out there that I thought were worth uh, mentioning. I, I want to talk about a couple of snacks, a couple of snack items, because God knows Disneyland does snacks better than any place on earth. Unbelievable stuff. They really do. Uh, the first thing we came across was the new uh, Bulgogi Skewers at Whitewater Snacks in the Grand California, the quick service location. $15 for these uh, they also had a shawarma chicken for fourteen and a Mediterranean vegetable skewer for twelve. Um, chicken I didn't care for, but these beef skewers were oh my god good, and like better than the beef skewers at Bengal Barbecue, and I love those. The chicken wasn't bad. The chicken was good. It was just the I thought the sauce was boring, but that sauce that came with the beef skewers was ridiculous it was crazy but if you dip that chicken in the beef sauce you're, everything should have been dipped in that beef yeah sauce. the vegetable soup the vegetable skewers too everything was meant for that teriyaki sauce or what was it was a teriyaki it was like it was a it was like a teriyaki yeah. sauce yeah. um but it wasn't quite teriyaki it was yeah. like kind of a, a take on it yeah um but it was sweeter and it was really good um the other thing that surprised me that i liked that it was suggested to me that i try was the buffalo turkey leg? Oh, you got that. I saw that. I yeah. saw that listed, and I was like, "Oh, interesting." And this is a turkey leg, but it is smothered in barbecue sauce, buffalo sauce, or oh, buffalo sauce. Yeah. Excuse me, uh, buffalo sauce topped with blue cheese, um, and scallions, and some other stuff. And um, I am not a fan of hot sauce. I like or buffalo sauce. I like turkey legs. I don't like. Buffalo sauce. Corey, you were the exact opposite. Yep. I like buffalo chicken and buffalo cauliflower and all sorts of buffalo things, but I do not like turkey legs at all. So, and and Mary Jo, you uh, you and Nancy tried it out uh, as well. Um, these were good. These, these are were, delicious. <laughs> I was like, and it's like one of these things is a meal. It's a meal. I forgot how much we paid for it. How much were they again? Does anybody remember? Um, Wasn't it fifteen dollars? It might have been. Does that sound too much for you? It might have been, but I think I think two people could eat this and have a really nice snack to tide them over until dinner. I mean, but from what I'm understanding now, this is going to be the start of a trend. Twelve forty nine. Twelve forty nine. It's even better. <laughs> this is going to be the start of a trend with the turkey legs. Having different flavor profiles. It's so, the new churro. <clears throat> it's the new churro. Meat churro. <laughs> it's a meat churro. The, yeah. the, the one thing that I would say that when people think of turkey legs, they think that they can walk around and eat them. These you have to sit down. It's there's too much sauce. It's dripping. Delicious sauce. Excuse, excuse yeah, me. It's dripping with sauce. Oh I mean, yeah, it's dripping with sauce, with and then the chives and the and the blue cheese on it just add Ugh. add just a really delicious flavor. And, and to me, sometimes. Um, buffalo sauce can be a little bit too spicy. I thought this was, it was flavorful without the over spiciness that sometimes it could have. It was, it was really, Yeah, really I don't good. like, I don't like the, the edge of buffalo sauce. It's that kind of vinegary edge to it. I don't know what, what, what it is, but, um, I don't like really spicy things. And this wasn't really like eating this wasn't like, you know, oh my God, my mouth is on fire by any means at all. It was mm-hmm. very mild as far as its spice was concerned. It's just as a flavor to the buffalo sauce that just doesn't agree with me. Um, but those two things, those two, sna- what's the matter? Oh, I it just, gross. I, I hate <laughs> turkey legs. I mean, I, I know, I know why people love them. If for me though, it's like the thought of it after, after years of cleaning thrown up turkey legs off of yeah. ride vehicles, I can't. Like any time I smell them. Well, most of us haven't had that. Most of us haven't had that. And hopefully people don't have to have that experience. (laughs) It's very enriching. Uh, It's humbling, but it is ruined for life. Well, you're going to see, you're going to, we, we, we've been told that there are going to be more 
uh, along those lines. Oh, I'm uh, sure a barbecue one is not far off. It says, it sounds, it's usually buffalo followed by barbecue. I'm sure there'll be something else. Teriyaki, some sort of sesame, sweet and sour. But fun fact, uh, the turkey legs actually have the highest calorie count of any Disney snack or food item you can get. They're like 1,200 calories for one turkey leg or really? something. Yeah. Thank and, you and, for and, sharing I mean, that, Rhino. Yeah. <laughs> it's because they're soaked in that brine, I think, for so long. But uh, that that could have changed in the couple of years ago that I found that out. But it was I won a trivia thing knowing that. So Diet turkey is coming. <laughs> All right, so uh, one of the other things that happened while we were there, uh, Jesse's Critter Carousel and uh, Pixar Pier opened up. Uh, yeah. Craig and Finally. Fias, Craig and Fiasco stalked it out. Yeah, we noticed that there was like a photo shoot going on, and uh, there's probably going to be a soft opening, and uh, there was. And we, we they brought a bunch of guests out. They said, you know, oh, who wants to who wants to be on the first ride? And they had them sign waivers just in case they. Well, because they were taking their pictures, they were they were yeah. shooting. Yeah, so yeah. that's they had a photography waiver. Yeah, yeah. no, it was uh, it just it was all fortuitous. So we it was kind of rumored there that the walls were going to be coming down, and that was the day we chose to go to DCA, not even thinking about it, and I uh, found out that Fiasco is is not very good with intense rides in the morning, so we bypassed Guardians of the Galaxy, and we're heading to Fun Delicate. Wheel, and th- just happened to be there, so then uh, if you've never met me before, I'm insane, and if I think something's going to open, I will sit outside of it for hours and hours oh, and yeah. hours. Oh, yeah, I know he will. Uh, like the one day that I sat outside of Mine Train, I think, for like eight hours to no avail on it. But, yeah, no, it, it it's, they were taking their photos, and then you could tell that it was just progressing along. So Nancy got to be on the very first ride of it. I didn't think they were going to allow people to have their phones or cameras out. So I was like, nope, nope, I'll... I won't. I won't bother with that. And sure, sure enough, enough, every single person on the carousel has their phone out, taking videos. So then I, I jumped on, and then I went on with Rhino. That thing is just plain adorable. It, it is. is it's so cute. It's 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 really cute, and I think it makes a nice addition to what they have at Pixar Pier. But I'll ask ask the question again: What the hell took so long? I mean, hand sculpted, I'm sure, with some of the, not like each one individually, but I'm sure first they had to sculpt out the the carousel critters and all of that, and then have them built and processed, and I'm sure they took the time to actually fix the the carousel mechanisms. Um, You know, I don't know how difficult that is, but it definitely looked like it was, uh, besides the paint, that it was running very smoothly, so I'm sure a little bit of that had to go into play so it's you know i don't know that it was necessarily necessary when pixar pier opened up yes i know i just said that uh but that's what i did and regardless it's open now we still have um we still have the inside out attraction the emotional whirlwind uh, coming along in the future here so it's it's nice that it's just a new addition sprinkled every now and then i'm sure from the local standpoint it's it would have been nice for it to be all open but i like that now, like the last time I was there in August, that was my first time getting to do Pixar Pier. And then this trip out, I had something new to experience. And the next time I go, I'll have Star Wars to experience. So as a, as a visitor, it's, it's really beautiful. And, it really is. Did, did any of you write the backward skunk? That, uh, there's a skunk that's backward with its tail up. Did any of you write that one? I no, thought no. that was so cute. We didn't write it, but I had to explain to Nancy why the skunk was backwards. She It seemed <clears> like <throat> she thought at first that they made a mistake with what direction it was going. I'm like, <laughs> it's spraying people. That's why it's butt forward. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I want to ask Tom and Mary Jo specifically, uh, what do you think of the announcement that Philhar Magic, Mickey's Philhar Magic, is going to be coming to the Muppet Theater? Uh, out in California Adventure. Go ahead, Marja. You probably have a lot more to say than I do. I think people <laughs> are going to love it. I, um, We need something in that Hollywood land area, that theaters, it's the old Muppet Theater, now it's called the Sunset, what's it called, Tom? Sunset Showcase Theater. Thank you, the Sunset Showcase Theater. It's been empty too long, and we need something. We need some place, especially since we're getting our hot summer and we're, it's going to be crowded. We need some place where people can sit down, where it's nice and cool, and enjoy just a fun show. And I love that it's this is one that's going to have 
you know, the, the our classic characters, Mickey, Donald, etc. And people are going to love it. I wish that they would bring us a new show. I'm, I'm interested to see how they're going to present it in that theater. But I can see people going there over. Well, they said again. it was going to be a smaller. It was a, the Orlando one has that that like wide panoramics. Yeah, screen. the panoramic screen, and I think yours is just filling the current screen that's already there. And for people that don't know, because you guys kept calling it the Muppets Theater, and I'm like, I have no idea where that area is even <laughs> is. It is if you've been in the last five years, because I've never been there since the Muppets have right. operated in the last like four years or so. It was where they were showing like preview clips of the movies and the Frozen area. It's outside of the Monster Inc. where like the Black Panther meets. It's like the next turn right there. But um, now, did they give a time frame as to when that was coming out there? April. So it's this month. This month, yeah. So this yeah. is part of. I, I think they're just looking to put whatever it put in whatever they can yes. to help draw as much of the crowd away from Galaxy's Edge when it opens. Mm-hmm. Um, that makes sense. And Tom, you had speculated that you thought this might be uh, temporary. Well, I mean, based on how quickly they're opening it, they're. they're I mean, they're not. I don't think they're doing a lot of work. Excuse me. <clears throat> a lot of work in the building. They're going to shoehorn it in. I can't imagine that it's going to be there long. Um, Initially, the rumor was that Hollywood land is going to become part of Marvel. I'm sorry, superhero land. Mm -hmm. Uh, But then I was thinking about it this morning. That is an awful lot of space if they use both Bugs Land, uh, Guardians, and any backstage area. To, to also annex the Hollywood land area, I think might be too much of the superhero. Uh, but they need to do something with that area. Uh, you know, they, they, right now they have basically three empty sound stages. Hmm. The, the, the Muppets area, the one they're using for Captain Marvel, and then the old um, Stage 17, which initially was Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Um, I think Mary Jo, correct me if I'm wrong. I think they're using the 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 actual building for where Captain Marvel is. Is that bakery in there? I think food service is in there. Where the Captain to, Marvel meet and greet is? Yeah, it used to be a restaurant, and, and when when years California ago, opened. yeah, uh, but I think opened. they actually. I think um, you're actually using it for food service. Was, um, on my so, first trip, it was an empty building that you could go in, and that's where they held all the annual pass holder. Or maybe it wasn't my first, <laughs> first trip, but it. W- I remember going into that area because people were like, that's the Blue Wall. And when you go inside, they used to have the AP area in there Yeah, at one point. And then they, also they when they had different things. Yeah, for Electronica, that's where they had the arcades and stuff. Remember inside oh, right. the building? Cool. Right. All right. So I'm going to pay attention to time here. We're running a little longer. Then I thought we were going to run. We still do have some more uh, uh, things I wanted to talk about, but maybe some of them we can we can do next. Yeah, week. like I know we were going to talk about mixed magic eventually, but that's been already running for months. Yeah. Just because we finally saw it doesn't mean it's it's worth discussing today. Well, all right. So I, I want to talk about Paradise Pier for a second. I'm not giving my review. I stayed at Paradise Pier Hotel this trip. Uh, I do have a review <laughs> coming up. Um, so stay tuned for that. But um, just uh, some interesting observations, let's say. Uh, last time I stayed at Paradise Pier was in March of 2013. So it's been six years. Um, the rooms have not changed. As a matter of fact, they haven't changed at all. I think the furniture is still the same furniture that was in there when I was there six years ago. Um, Except the pillow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you the pillows on the bed were like, no, I'm talking about the, the Pixar pillow, the, uh, the, the ball. Yeah. 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 Um, Used no, to be a beach I'm, ball. I'm talking about the, uh, just the pillows you sleep on. Concrete would have been more comfortable, but I, I I'll, I'll save all that stuff for some other time. Um, you know, it has been talked about repeatedly by us, by many, many other people for a long time, how that hotel just doesn't fit. It just doesn't fit. It doesn't fit with Disneyland Hotel. It doesn't fit with the Grand Californian. 
Um, in the review that we recorded, uh, I referred to it as the best off-property hotel in Anaheim um, because that's what it is. It is it, it's it's a it's a property in search of a theme, um, in search of a purpose, and conversations. Let's just say I've had had some conversations. Nothing at all confirmed in this at all. This is my speculation. I could be 100% wrong. I'm not, but I could be. <clears throat> the money that was going to go into that new hotel that got scrapped is going to end up getting put into Paradise Pier. I think they're going to take that hotel offline. I think they're going to take all those rooms offline and they are going to sink a ton of money into that hotel and from the ground up, turn it into a luxury property. Um, I found it interesting that the new general manager of that hotel, he's been recent, recently made the general manager, didn't come from within Disney. He mm. comes from the Ritz Carlton. Mm. You don't put a general manager of a Ritz Carlton hotel into the Paradise Pier. Unless you're going to sink a lot of money into it and turn it into a luxury resort, or he pissed somebody off and he's being punished. One or the other. And I don't think he pissed anybody off. <clears throat> and I'm almost certain that's exactly what's going to happen. And I don't think they can do this incrementally. I think they have to shut the hotel down and they have to shut it down for a year, at least. The structure, the basic structure of the hotel is solid. But they have to turn it into something that is not, oh, well, nothing else is available. We'll just stay there. They need that hotel to be a destination unto itself. And the only way they're going to get away with it, the only way they're going to get it, because they have done everything conceivable to that hotel. They have changed it so many times. They have done so many different <clears throat> iterations on it. It hasn't worked. The only thing to do, short of leveling it and building a new building, is to literally soak money, sink money into it and turn it into a luxury property. And I think that's the direction it's going. I also think that the location where the parking garage is behind Paradise Pier is going to be the location of an expansion to that hotel that may or may not be Disney Vacation Club. I had heard a rumor um, <clears throat> of, about a year ago that they were talking about turning the retheming the hotel for sure um, into a Marvel themed hotel. And I believe, is it Disneyland Paris? I heard about that too. At Disneyland Paris, I think the Hotel New York is being turned into, <laughs> into a, a Marvel one. A right? Marvel themed hotel. Yeah. I thought that too. And then I heard the general manager came from Ritz Carlton. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. going to happen. Interesting. Not going to happen. Because you're not going to bring so, if you're going to do that, you're going to promote from within <laughs> Disney. Mm -hmm. You are not going to go outside the company, especially Disney, who does not do that a lot. Yeah. You are not going to go outside the company, tap a GM from Ritz Carlton and put him in that property and then turn it into the Captain America suite. Um, so unless you're damaged, unless your decision making process has collapsed completely, which I do not believe is the case out in Disneyland. So um, that much I'm I'm I want to say I'm about 70 percent sure. That's what's going to happen here. Uh, the piece about adding another building and making it DVC, that I'm about maybe 30 to 40% sure. It makes sense to me. It feels right. Again, I have nothing concrete on any of this. This is just me. I'm so angry. Well, put the damn phone down. <laughs> um, this is just me uh, kind of just reading the tea leaves out there and hearing what I'm hearing, watching what I'm watching. Um, I could be completely off on all this. I think if it's going to happen, we're going to hear about it by the end of the year. By the end of the year, we're going to hear something about Paradise Pier. I don't see any way for them to really make that property work shy of everything I just said. Shut it down. 
complete just get get away from piers and beaches and balls and all the crap get away from it it's not your brand and i don't care if you throw pixar on it it's not your brand stop it and this that hotel they have stopped trying to make piers work you know what i'm saying um it's always been like you know surfboards and you know, uh, enough it didn't work. It didn't work. If it was going to work, it would have by now. See, the only thing left to do is complete shift, complete shift in the approach. So that's kind of where I'm thinking this is going. And I think it will end up being a five, six, seven hundred dollar a night property. But if that was to happen, that would kind of work in Disneyland Hotel's favor because then that would step out and be for sure the the lowest price hotel that's wow. also the most family friendly. And because that's the one thing they have to fill. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Kids love Paradise Pier. I don't understand why. Um, it's I mean, it's just like a step into the gulag. But it's, it's not that bad. It yeah. really wasn't. I, I, I'm i very sensitive to mold. And my room was moldy when I was there. But I mean, my room was not. I, I got to tell you, there was no indication whatsoever of mildew or mold in that room. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it, so I just had a one off on it. I didn't care for my experience there. But I mean, you need that very family friendly hotel in there. So if they're going to make Disneyland hotel, that one, that's great. It just has to be, in my opinion, that needs to be the lowest starting. See, I, price. I, I don't know if I'm them, if I'm them and I'm a business, I'm looking at the fact that the grand Californian has a 90% occupancy pretty much all the time, if not completely sold out. And you're talking about rooms that are starting at $500 a night. I'm going to look to expand on that. So if I've got a hotel right now that isn't working, that you know, is is maybe I'm getting three fifty a night for, and I can invest money that I was going to spend building this other hotel, but now I'm not going to. So I got this money sitting around. Let me throw it into that, and then start getting six hundred a night for it. I I just that's a very simplistic version of it. But Tom, Mary, Joe, what do you think? What do you think Tom, about you them doing? If they were to do that to back. Paradise Pier, do you think that would be a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. I don't know the good and bad is the question. I think they wrong, need to Mary do Joe. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I, well, I, I think they need to do. They have to do something different, significantly different with that hotel. I think uh, the the word you used was destination, and right now it's not. Um, no, it's really there's no, no place else to stay, so I'll stay there. There's there's really no reason to go over there, um, and and once you leave your room. There's no reason to stay there, you know, because, you know, the the Grand has the, the beautiful lobby, Hearthstone Lounge. The Disneyland Hotel has Trader Sam's, Tang Road Terrace. And Paradise Pier Hotel has none of that. It's not, it's not, that lobby is not inviting, not comfortable. No, not they've the got least. To, they've got to do something. Mary Jo, what do you think? I, I like that idea that, there's that they're going to expand that they're going they they do need to do something they do need to put uh, you go to Walt Disney World and there's these resorts that you want to stay at because they're so beautiful and they're themed so well and there's so much to do Disneyland doesn't really offer that uh, we have a taste of it with the Grand California Hotel I believe and like Tom said the Disneyland Hotel has has the the tiki bar and and that whole that whole area but the Paradise Pier Hotel is just so generic and with even with all the decorations they put on it it's just a place to stay and they do have space behind it like that and you mentioned Pete they have that parking garage they could really expand that and kind of blend it into the Disneyland hotel they already had been talking about doing that with the new hotel and having shops and uh, a whole area that people would go to with restaurants and we need that at the Disneyland Resort. I I think like I said I um my gut is like almost certain it's going to be in that in that vein in that direction. But I guess we're just going to have to wait and see, but um I would love to see it happen. I would love to see it happen. I think there are some good moderate price options in the Anaheim area. Uh 
Certainly not the place that Rhino and <laughs> Craig and Tom and Corey were staying. Uh, and you want to tune in next week because next week they're going to have their review of the Anaheim Hotel. You are not, not, <laughs> not going to want to miss that. Okay? You are not going to want to miss that. Um, I don't want to miss it. I'm going to have popcorn ready. <laughs> okay? I'm going to have popcorn ready because that is going to be a review for the ages. But that is going to do it for this episode of our show. I can't believe how fast this went and I still didn't get to everything. So leaves us more stuff to talk about next time. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Thanks, Mary Jo and Tom, for joining us. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you again next week with another episode of the Diz Unplugged. Have a great week, everyone.